All right, a foggy and delayed morning turns into a beautiful and dramatic well, afternoon and evening here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for day one of qualifications. And well, there were some surprises, there were some unsurprises, and there were a lot of reliability issues. So what was your take on the day? What did you notice? What did you see? All that stuff. Well, I, I mean, Chevy looks strong if you're Penske. Uh, the other ones seem to have this reoccurring issue. Larson had it. Pato had it. Uh, I, uh, I don't really know what to take from that. Um, lots of kind of surprises, though, um, in the Fast 12 especially. Yeah. Um, but not in the front row. That's uh, as expected. So let's kind of dwell on some of the biggest storylines heading from today. So fourth car in line, Renus VK crashes uh, in the north end of the track uh, in turn three. They completely rebuild the car, and on a last-ditch attempt, now they were sitting 29th uh, heading into the final 10 minutes. They did a last ditch attempt, they withdrew their time. Remember, 29th would have been locked in for the Indy 500. And then they went out and they put it in the Fast 9. They end up 11th on the day, so they do have a chance to challenge for pole position tomorrow. Um, now, for the other Chevys, we experienced this four times with Ed Carpenter. We experienced it with Kyle Larson, most notably. We experienced it with Pato Award once. And then also Augustine Canapino, when he was looking like he was going to bump into that Fast 12 shootout tomorrow, all had what they called a plenum issue. Now, it, for those of you who follow the IndyCar series on the regular, uh, this was an issue that kind of appeared last year with Pato Award at St. Petersburg that cost him a win in the fight with Marcus Erickson. This is a very unusual issue that happens once every so often, but we had it happen four times in one day. Yeah, and it's uh, it obviously is a big problem. I mean, Larson had a great run going, and it totally killed that. Uh, Canapino had a great run going, and it totally killed that. It put Pato in the last row shootout until probably about two hours to go or so. Um, it's. I think it's only going to be a qualifying problem, but considering that half, at least, of the Fast 12 tomorrow is Chevrolet, I'm very curious to see how this is going to play out. Now, Chevrolet is not the only ones with reliability issues. Um, Honda has definitely some issues going on as well. Two engines, two Honda engines were replaced today. The first one being Scott Dixon after this morning's warm-up where he was one of only eight drivers in the delayed warm-up, delayed by fog. Um, they kind of confirmed that there was something going on with the car and they made the option to go ahead and replace that Honda power plant. They did not make their guaranteed attempt, but they did get out eventually and do their run uh, later on in the afternoon. And Graham Rahal, while he was on his first run of the day, had just some, the car just shut off. And that would be um, the start of a woeful day for the number 15 United Rentals. Um, can we call it the Crossing Guard Special? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Think that's fitting. Okay. So we'll kind of go over what happened with Graham Rahal there after the engine issue and the force engine replacement. I mean, painfully familiar territory for Rahal. Uh, not Rahal himself, Rahal Letterman Lanigan as a whole, honestly. Um, but uh, Graham Rahal struggling to find that speed again, struggling to find the straightaway speed, keep the speed in the corners. He's on the outside looking in right now. Actually, he's not in 34th, but he is in the last row shootout again tomorrow. And so I just don't think that Rahal found those missing pieces, except if you're in the 75 or the 45. So today was definitely a mixed bag of emotions for the Ray Hall camp as Takuma Sato in the number 75 entry for the stable managed to make it into the Fast 12. However, the other entries did not fare so well. Christian Lungar would be the next best of the group in 28th, and Pietro Fittipaldi sat on the bubble for much of the last hour um, under threat from not only the two Dale Coin cars, but his own teammates of Graham Ray Hall to get in. And of course, Graham Ray Hall is not locked into the show, and tomorrow we'll have to fight to get in that Fast 12, or that, not Fast 12, that last row shootout uh, familiar territory for ray hall with the 15 and the 30. Uh, i mean it's a bummer to see this team in that situation again uh they obviously didn't find what they needed to find uh the 75 is different i think so that's kind of an indie only program sato has been seemingly running his own program this entire week they've been focusing on qualifying um, all week as yeah well. and i i I don't know. It's just it's just very familiar territory, and Ray Hall obviously didn't find what they needed to find, and here we are again. And Ray Hall, I 
believe tried no less than four times today to try to get into that spot after that engine change and was unsuccessful. He actually got out with five seconds left to go after Renus VK's Bonsai run, which we'll talk more about when we get to the Fast 9 or Fast 12. I'm sorry, they changed this so much. Um, the Fast 12 shootout for tomorrow. But here are the ones that need to fight their way in, the four cars fighting for three spots. So it's going to be Nolan Siegel, who made no less than four attempts today, and he was getting better every run. Keep in mind, he is running Jack Harvey's road course car from the Grand Prix after having to go to the backup car after his flip yesterday, which we talked about. Um, Catherine Legg, Dale Coyne Racing, as a whole, is going to be fighting for that last row shootout. And then... Marcus Erickson, the other one that had to go to a backup car this week, it, it, that car just had no pace throughout the entire day. Yeah, and I think it's interesting to see how different teams are reacting in these situations and how, I mean, Andretti was, overall seems pretty mid, and Erickson, that completely deflated anything he was trying, like anything, any success, any speed, any momentum he had. And, I mean, Dale Coyne Racing, we talked about him yesterday. This is... Yeah. Well, and Kath, so of note, uh, the three of the four, with the exception of Catherine Lake, have had some sort of major issue throughout the week. Uh, Graham, remember back, had that half shaft failure during practice on thir on Thursday, um, and then also the engine change this morning. Um, Nolan and Marcus Erickson both sustaining crash damage and having to go to the backup cars because of tub damage to their primaries. Uh, the Catherine Leg just hasn't had this raw speed. You know, she's been very shaky on doing her quality sims yesterday and today. She even brushed the wall in her first attempt. Yeah, I mean, yesterday uh, she looked very not, that car did not look good. Um, she said in one of our interviews with her that she is pushy, and you could see that very strong Friday morning. They've definitely improved that car a lot, but it's just not enough. She was over 230 today. That was that team's first lap, over 230 this month, um, but just still not, not enough. All right, so let's switch gears real quick and go to the contenders for the pole position tomorrow, the Fast 12 shootout, those who are locked in. And we talked about yesterday it being a very Penske posse front of the grid, and that continued today. Will Power topped off today with an average speed of 233.758, followed by Scott McLaughlin at a 233.332, and then Joseph Newgarden, the third of the Penske posse, right up there, uh, with a 233.293. Uh, the, the Penske cars are the only one in the ballpark of each other. Um, the next nearest guy would be uh, Alexander Rossi, and those are the only four cars that can make it into, um, or those were the only four cars that made it into that 233 barrier. Yeah, big difference from this year to last year in speed. Uh, very unexpected speed drop. Uh, we were kissing 235s. Barely into the 233s, um, but still a very, very tight field. I think that's going to maybe be a 234 that gets the pull tomorrow. But, yeah, uh, yeah amazing and just shocking to see only four cars over 233. So let's kind of go through the rest of the rundown real quick, and we'll break down further into that fast line, and then we'll also get you the starting positions for P13 through 30. Uh, fourth place, Alexander Ross in the Aero McLaren entry. Fifth place, the top Honda from Kyle Kirkwood. He had two attempts, but his first one was the one he stuck or sat on for the whole day um, in fifth place. Kyle Larson in sixth. That was his second run of the day that where he set that time after having that plenum event that sidelined them for the better part of three hours. Felix Rosenquist was a one and done today in the Meyer Shank Racing Honda. Still trying to fight saying Acura, but uh, Honda up there at seventh. That's a little bit of a pleasant surprise for that team, making their first uh, pole shootout appearance here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Eighth place, Santino Frucci. Uh, he's up there fighting for the pole once again. It shouldn't be a surprise after what we saw from that team and that car last year, and they seem to have gotten their earlier issues figured out. Takuma Sato, we talked about him being the top. Ray Hall up there in ninth. Tenth place, Patricio Award. I know, I just call him by his full name. Um, had some issues earlier on in the day. He had a plenum event as well that cast him down in doubt for that um, last row shootout. However, he managed to do a third attempt and get up there into 10th position. 11th, Renus Rocket VK with a ballsy run at the end. We'll cover that here in a second. And then 12th and final uh, entrant into that uh, pole shootout is Ryan Hunter Ray with Dreyer and Reinbull with a really good run in the towards the end. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about Renus VK. 
We talked about how he had the crash this morning. They had to go back, repair the car. He did an installation as a qualifying attempt. And then from there, he went out. He did a bonsai run in the final five minutes where he withdrew his time. And I think we already covered this. But, th again, it's very impressive that he's able to withdraw his time and bump his way into that fast 12 shootout. It's something that you don't really see anymore. No, I mean, amazing turnaround by that Ed Carpenter Racing team. The car was not tubbed. That would help the situation. But, sorry, we got a box truck coming through. Um, but, I mean, incredible job by the Ed Carpenter Racing Group. Turned that car around, got it out, got it into 29th, locked it in the show pretty much right away. And then, I mean, went out there and did what they needed to do. They put the car in the Fast 12, as we expect Ed Carpenter Racing to do. All right, so let's go ahead and go through positions 13 through 30. This is where they will start, and those cars are in the garages until Monday for that two-hour practice session. And 13th, Colton Herta getting bumped out in the final five minutes of qualifying. He was always kind of there on that edge of being bumped out, and then finally it did happen. He did make an attempt that reasserted that 12th place position, but ultimately did get bumped out of that uh, shootout. Uh, Alex Plo, he waited for the better part of half an hour to get a run on track where he would stand on his guaranteed time from 14th. However, it just never happened, and that's kind of to be expected here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway when, when you have guys fighting and withdrawing their times because they have nothing else to lose to get up there into that top um, 12, or that first and foremost out of that last row shootout and into that top 12. If you're in the guaranteed line where you don't have to withdraw your time, you're going to be sitting there for a minute. Yeah, and that's the thing with Indy. I mean, that's the drama, that's the beauty, that's what makes Indy so special, is that you can have a driver like Renus VK say, you know what, hell with it. Yeah. And withdraw their time and, you know, boot out somebody who looked super strong and looked like they were going to be a contender for the pool tomorrow. All right, and 15th, Callum Eilat, the lowest place of the Aero McLaren entries. 16th, Marcus Armstrong in the number 11 car. Uh, Marcus Armstrong and Kiffin Stimson, who we'll talk about here in a second, both kind of solidly impressed me. I thought uh, Kiffin would be a little bit lower than he ended up being, but he was in that Fast 12 shootout for the better part of four hours today, so all props to him. Um, 17th position, Ed Carpenter. ECR as a whole kind of disappointed today with the exception of that last run from Renus VK. Um, Kiffin Simpson placed his 18th. Marco Andretti, 19th. He had a moment on his attempted second run, and he abandoned pretty quickly. 20th position, Helio Castroneves. 21st, Scott Dixon. That team has, they did that emergency engine change this morning after warm up. They never got back on the track, or they didn't get on the track until it was time to go. And it shows this is the worst ever starting position for Scott Dixon, whose previous was an 18th in 2019. And no matter what he did, he just could not get anywhere close to that fast 12. Yeah, I mean, Coming into this month of May, any month of May, Scott Dixon is always a favorite to win and get the pull and just sweep the month. And that has just not substantiated. Just again, I mean, very weird to see Ganassi not be a factor at the Speedway. Um, next up, we have Augustin Canapino, who was another one of those late runners this afternoon. He had a plenum issue. He was actually tracking maybe well inside that fast 12 and that pun of issue happened on his fourth lap and killed any chance he had of uh, breaking his way into the top 12, so he stands on his first time. Stingray Rob had a pretty decent day. He did a couple of attempts. He didn't really advance too much further, but he did show great pace throughout the day. Uh, Christian Rasmussen, uh, he had a moment on his, I believe it was third lap that kind of killed any chance, but before that, he was tracking inside that fast 12. Um, Tom Blumquist, um, kind of an average day, you know, kind of what we expected for him here. It's been a Relative, relatively rough year on rookies, especially for lack of track time. Uh, Roman Grosjean ends up 26. Linus Lundquist was a one and done. He just guaranteed attempt and put it in the box for the rest of the day. We talked about Christian Lungard uh, in 28th, Connor Daly in 29th. He was also tracking to be well above where he was placed. I think it was like 14th or 15th. And then he made a mistake getting a little too close to the wall in turn number three, and that was it for him. And then the final spot in 30th is Pietro Fittipaldi, who does not have to come back and defend that 30th position tomorrow. That's a lot to go over, but what do you make of the Chip Ganassi situation, considering how dominant they've been the last couple of years? Yeah, it's uh, it shakes everything up. I mean, coming into this race uh, a month ago, looking after Long Beach, uh, you know, obviously the favorites are Alex Plow and Scott Dixon. Well, and they they won Long Beach and they won the yeah, Grand Prix. Here. Exactly. Yeah, and they are the they were the favorites, and then. 
here we are looking at qualifying tomorrow for the pole. Neither of them are going to be going for the pole, which is the first time, I think. Uh, Polo hasn't gone for the pole since 2020. No, he did in 2020 with uh, oh, yeah, Team he Go. Wasn't okay, first, there no. you go. So um, it's just a very odd situation. I wonder if there's a long-term plan here, but there was a lot of personnel changes at Ganassi Racing over the offseason, and I think we're seeing that ripple effect here, when, especially when the rookies are the ones who were the best. So to kind of wrap this up in the easiest way possible, um, all the cards are in Team Penske's hands right now. Uh, they have the first three positions locked out. They have the affiliate card with Santino Ferrucci up there as well. And nine out of the 12 cars shooting for the pole tomorrow are all Chevy. So let's wrap it up here from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for today. But first, here is a word from our sponsors at Peak. Protect your vehicle with Peak Original Equipment Technology. Our formulas match the vehicle manufacturer's technology requirements so that we have the perfect match for every vehicle. All right, definite thanks to our sponsors at Peak, and we cannot forget the folks at Drag Race, Bracket Bonanza. Don't forget to submit your picks tonight because by the time this video is out, qualifying will be wrapped up in Chicago for the Route 66 Nationals, and I'm going to try once again to beat Noah at his own game of getting this video out before him. We will. Uh, yeah, we will. Um, we're the better team, right? We have the time zone. Yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, so pick for pull, pick for go home. Pick for pull. I like Joseph Newgarden. He has the confidence. He has the speed. That number two shell machine looks bad fast. And the same as last year. Yep. And going home, I hate to say it, but Nolan Siegel. That team is just too far behind. You cannot. They found two miles an hour somehow, but I think that's the only two miles an hour they're going to find. Unless um, unless they throw the kitchen sink at it and all the kitchen sinks in that garage area. But um, for me... Uh, I do agree with you on the Nolan Siegel side of things. However, Scott McLaughlin, I think, is going to get the pull. There's just something about him this month. I mean, there's a confidence there that wasn't there in previous years. Yes, this is his fourth attempt at it, but I don't know. Something speaks to it. I mean, 40 years ago, a car with a very similar livery, it didn't look the same, and it Probably the car back then was a little bit cooler. I'm sure someone behind the camera over there will agree. Um, <laughs> one here, and he is wearing a fire suit to kind of complete that little throwback. So I, I don't know. I think there's an aurora to it. I think Scott McLaughlin can do it and will do it tomorrow. But for tonight, it's time to do like the Penske cars did. Pack it in the shed. Go home. Relax and get ready for another action-packed day tomorrow. So... Be sure, because he texts me the lines of things to say at the end of these videos after yesterday. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, follow us on TikTok, Threads, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, slash X, or whatever the heck it is now. And we will, and also be sure to subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> and we will see you tomorrow. Also, for our comrade David Land, ahoy. Love you, David. <laughs>